Hi, I'm Jim. Thanks for joining us. After arriving at a customer's home to perform a pole mount installation, verify that there are no other viable mounting options. Pole mounts can be a daunting task and require intense physical labor. If a pole mount is required and you verify that there are no other options, follow the steps in this video to help you perform the installation safely and efficiently. Pole mounts are unique in that you won't be determining the mounting location. It's already been selected by the person who ordered the pole mount initially. When you arrive on site, the underground utilities company will have already inspected the area proposed for digging. You'll see colored flags that mark underground obstacles. Make sure that these obstacles do not intersect the proposed mounting location or the cabling routes. If the proposed routes do cross marked utility lines, designate a new route. If you need to propose an alternate route, you must call 811 so it can be cleared by the underground utilities company. When you're ready to install the pole mount, remind the customer what installing a pole mount entails and double check that no other mounting option could be used. Remember, digging a three foot hole, a trench, and mixing concrete are extremely tiring and time consuming. Only install the pole mount when absolutely necessary. During the customer confirmation, Unplug all equipment from power to avoid a potential electrical shock when connecting the system later. At the temporary mount, remove all but one block and take them back to your vehicle one at a time. On each trip back from the vehicle, bring items that you'll need to install the pole mount. This includes two 50-pound bags of concrete, a shovel, a post hole digger, and two gallons of water. Don't forget your dust mask and other PPE. Make sure to get the customer's permission before you use water from their home to mix the concrete. The bucket in your vehicle holds five gallons. Fill it a little less than halfway up so that you have the two gallons you'll need to mix the concrete. Leaving one block on the non-pen mount will prevent it from tipping over while you remove the last block and take the dish off the mast. When returning from the vehicle to perform these steps, bring your tool belt so that you can cut the zip ties and remove the dish. Gently set the dish to the side while you install the pole mount. Take the last block and the non-pen mount back to the vehicle and remove your tool belt. Using the shovel, dig a hole that's three feet deep and at least seven inches wide at the bottom. Most of the poles used in the field are seven feet long. If your location uses an eight foot pole, dig to a depth of four feet instead. The pole must reach these required depths to ensure the mount is stable. Keep all the loose dirt in a neat pile for packing back into the hole later. When working with concrete, you must wear a dust mask, safety glasses, and all other required PPE to avoid exposure to concrete dust. After the hole's been dug to the correct dimensions, set the pole in the hole and pour in one 50-pound bag of concrete. Next, pour a gallon of water, or one half the amount that you filled in the bucket, on top of the concrete. Repeat these steps with the other 50-pound bag of concrete and then use the remaining gallon of water. Gently stir the concrete with the flattened end of the pole until the water is evenly dispersed into the mix. Don't lift the pole while stirring or you won't be able to return it to the proper depth as the concrete thickens. After stirring, set the pole in the center and make sure that it's level in two separate locations. Wash your hands immediately after working with wet cement. Every 10 minutes, as the cement dries, check that the pole remains level. Never place the dish while the concrete is still drying, as this can make the mount uneven. Also, while the concrete dries, use the shovel or post hole digger to dig a trench along the cabling route, starting from the house. In many instances, you will be digging in a customer's yard that has sod. Carefully cut a wedge out of the sod so that it can be neatly replaced. Make sure that you dig deep enough to bury the cable at least six inches deep. After the trench has been dug, route and bury the cable. The concrete usually takes about 30 to 45 minutes to dry. Once it has, verify that the pole is still level and place the dish on the mast. Attach the cable sweep to the pole and run the cable up the pole using zip ties. Next, attach the ground strap and then create a service loop with the extra cable. Now that everything is properly secured into place, fill the hole with the loose dirt high enough to bury the cable sweep. Point and peak the dish. Once you have good signal strength, tighten all hardware using a 7 16 inch wrench. Make sure to clean up your workspace and remove all remaining flags from the customer's yard. Plug the customer's receiver back in and perform a check switch. Show the customer the pole mount and emphasize that the concrete needs 24 hours to fully set 
and that any interference with the pole may result in signal loss. When installing a pole mount for DishNet, the process is very similar, but there are a few key differences that we need to cover. While there are no changes to the actual DishNet powered by Viasat process, bear in mind that there are two poles to choose from when performing installations for these two different systems. If you utilize the Viasat proprietary reflector, you'll need the wild blue pole. If you use the universal reflector, on the other hand, you must use the DishNet pole. The DishNet pole measures 8 feet in length, and the circumference of the DishNet pole is also larger than the standard pole in order to support the extra weight of the larger reflector. If the base of the pole is not flattened, you'll need to screw lags into the pre-drilled holes on the bottom of the pole. This will ensure that the pole does not spin once it's set into the concrete. A metal adapter has been designed to slide onto the larger pole. This adapter has a smaller circumference on the top side so that the dishnet mast will fit snugly onto it. Use the three bolts to secure the adapter to the pole, then place the dishnet reflector on the adapter and tighten the hardware. As you saw in this video, the pole mount consumes more time and energy than all other mounting solutions. Not only that, it involves multiple truck rolls and extensive digging in the customer's yard. This is why it falls to 13th on the mounting priority chart. This is a last resort option. Make sure that you've considered all other options before ordering or installing a pole mount. Let's review some key steps. Use a dust mask and all other required PPE. Check that the pole mount is level every 10 minutes while the concrete is drying. And wash your hands immediately after working with wet cement. That's all for now. Thanks for joining us.